see this and we know immediately antiquity, longevity, climate history, undisturbed virgin forest. David Staley knew it as soon as he stepped foot here. This is no ordinary forest, if a forest can ever be said to be ordinary. No, this is a place studded with living, growing, ancient history. And so this is the undisturbed cross timber. This is virgin forest, in my opinion. This is absolutely undisturbed, ancient cross timbers, forest dominated by post oak and blackjack oak. This is what covered perhaps four million acres, maybe five million acres of pre-settlement Oklahoma and can still be found in a few places like here near Keystone Lake in these rough, rugged lands. Before European settlers took to cutting them, the cross timbers covered more than 30,000 square miles of Kansas, Texas, and Oklahoma. Oh, these are definitely old trees, definitely. To find out what's still left, David Staley and his graduate students from the University of Arkansas have been tramping through for over 20 years now. Oak trees are their mileposts. Hunkered down here in sandstone and shale, short on nutrients and water, they mark the westernmost boundary of America's great hardwood forests. And the main one being post oak, Quercus stellata, you know, the beautiful small oaks, but that one it would be 180 to 220 years old if it's a day. And if you look into the distance, you can see many additional post oaks in that age class and some up to 200 and 300 years old. But, mm, it's all pretty, it's especially pretty in the spring. If it's possible for a mere mortal to own a forest of 300 year old trees, then in this case, that mortal would be Sam Childers. At least a sizable chunk of it is his. And until the Arkansans showed up, Sam, like just about everyone else who has a stake in the cross timbers, never thought his land extraordinary. But now they do, they, they mean something. They used to be just those old trees to me. They were firewood and uh, so on. But now they, they do have character after finding out uh, that some of them were here, according to Dr. Staley, when uh, Columbus came. Like the red cedars that dot this Keystone Lake hillside, 500 year old red cedars, the oldest living things in Oklahoma. Yeah, this is definitely an ancient eastern red cedar right here, and he's got some of the classic hallmarks of old growth red cedar. So this, this tree, we've actually cored this tree in a previous visit. It's tree number 74 at this particular location. I can just look at this tree and tell you that this is definitely a 300 plus year old Juniperus virginiana. You don't often get to touch a 300 year old living thing. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? If it could talk. Well, they can talk to you on the inside. Indeed, they do talk. These are natural libraries of environmental history. These trees record the history of climate, the history of wind storms, the history of uh, frost events in their annual growth rings for hundreds of years. And, and these it's weather research that brought Staley to this hilltop. The it's the magnitude of what he found that's put him in the forefront of efforts to set this land aside as a natural reserve. We'll place it up against the tree and push. With every twist of his auger, he taps into a potential cataclysm. Twist, there's the dust bowl. Twist, there's an earthquake. Twist, there's a great flood. A riveting timeline silently recorded, quietly given up. 1750, Revolutionary War, about Lewis and Clark, uh, the 49ers, the Gold Rush era, the Civil War out here, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, the great conservation president here, and the establishment of Yellowstone and Grand Canyon and the magnificent crown jewels in North America, World War I, World War II, Vietnam, and today, 1999. The news on six drills a hole in my side. <laughs> <laughs> These are remarkable trees. Aren't they? I mean, the, the history you hold in your hand there. And not only the historical dates, but drought and flood and uh, tornado and climate history. Absolutely. And if the deal goes through sometime soon, about 1,300 acres of this remarkable forest will be set aside for all of us to enjoy. 
from solitude and wonder. Just 30 miles from downtown Tulsa, it has the potential to become a national treasure on the scope of the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve. Quite an upgrade for Sam Childers' firewood plot. It's, it's important to preserve it. It's a part of our history. It is our history. That grows richer every time the wind blows, every time the sun sets. Now, even though this is not the redwoods, but this is a native, original fragment of Oklahoma. This is what vast acreages of this state were like prior to European settlement. And we ought to save some of this. Along Keystone Lake, Scott Thompson, The Oklahoma Traveler.